and most of us don't want to talk about it. Now, this is the point where it begins to heat up a bit. Okay, now so far you must have noticed that all my root causes were kind of you know, exogenous. They were like kind of outside this room. It's, it's someone else. Well, yeah, that leadership, those guys sitting there. I'm not leadership. That's tra strategic failure. I, I'm not involved in that, by the way. And those poor policies, yeah, I don't make any policies. But there's one root cause which makes everyone very uncomfortable because it is within ourselves. It's the root of all causes. And it's the root of all causes and that's why it makes us all very uncomfortable because it directly involves us. There is no better way to describe the class to which most of us in this room belong. There is no better word to describe it than call it dysfunctional. Dysfunctional middle class that is least bothered about a number of things. Least bothered about corruption, least bothered about public group, least bothered about the sagging infrastructure, least bothered about repeated attacks, least bothered because we have effectively supported the system. And a dysfunctional middle class that continues to find excuses, constantly find excuses. Oh, this is not my problem. I pay my taxes, so why should I bother? Oh, it's the politician. So, you know, the problem is we have too many people. I'm sure you have heard these phrases before. All of you have. Constant excuses. Too many people, corrupt officials, bureaucracy, literacy, etc., etc. Constantly trying to find excuses and trying very hard, trying very, very hard not to think about it, not to talk about it, just let's pretend, let's all pretend everything is fine. Please don't, you know, disrupt my peaceful Monday evening or please don't disrupt my weekend by talking about these things. Because I don't believe I am doing it. This, this dysfunctional middle class is our biggest problem. You and me are our biggest challenge and our biggest problem. And the only way, and I sincerely believe this, the only way anything will change, the only way anything will change in a sustained way is when people like you and me begin to get involved. But pretending that everything is fine is not the answer because everything is not fine. This cannot be fine. None of these images can be fine. We cannot be honest with ourselves and say, actually everything is fine because it's not fine. It's terribly wrong. It's actually very, very badly wrong. So please, first is let's recognize there is a problem. Let's recognize the problem is within us. The problem is we. The problem is you and me. And the only way, therefore, to fix this problem, the only way to fix this problem is for you and me to get involved. You and me who are educated, you and me who are healthy, and you and me who have our stomachs full. We have what I call the luxury of thought. We have the luxury of thought that is denied to the poor card pusher who is outside selling vegetables. That poor person, that poor guy or the poor woman does not have the luxury of thought. The poor sweeper does not have the luxury of thought. We, we do have that. We have that because our stomachs are full. We know there is food on the table when we get back. We know how to analyze and understand the situation. We know what causes what. And we have, fortunately, all of us have been very fortunate to be blessed with a healthy body. So unless you and me do something about this, there's going to be no change. Because the poor, the destitute, the unfortunate are too miserable. I mean, their whole daily life is a struggle for existence. It's a struggle. We cannot expect them to lead this change. It's very unfair to even consider that. And the very rich have no stake in improving the system. They are effectively out of the system. They are there only physically in India, if at all. They are psychologically, they are checked out of India. So really the only hope for change is you and me. And we are therefore the root cause of most of what ails our system, our governance, you name it, whatever ails our society, our country, our nation, in the end, it's you and me who are responsible. It's you and me who prefer to go back and watch TV and say, let me not think about it because you know, it's very hard and it becomes painful and it's very problematic. 
I, I begin to get a headache or I become very angry, so I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I will do some charity and then I'm fine, I can sleep alright. Or I'll, by the way, I'll go and clean my street also on weekends just to show solidarity and do some civic activism. That's not going to fix anything. Yeah, it might make your street a bit cleaner than other streets, but it's not going to fix anything, unfortunately. No. So, what is the way out? And very simply, from the last several years that I've been thinking about this and dwelling on this and discussing this with people, I came up with three points. Very simple. What needs to be done? What needs to be done? Now, let's start with three very simple things. Very simple things. It's not, I'm not asking for anyone to go out and join a revolution or do something dramatic. No. Let's first start getting interested. Let's first take ownership. The problems, the society, this is our society. These are our problems. Let's take ownership. Let's not say this is someone else's problem because you know my kids are abroad and they are settled. So why should I care? Oh, by the way, I can also go abroad because I have a green card. I can go do that. No, let's not do that. Let's start taking ownership. This is my society. This is my country. If your roof is leaking, you don't expect your neighbor to come and fix it. No one will fix our 